Human factors are universal in all groups and they are subject to the same limitations. But high reliability organizations consistently outperform others even in hazardous dynamic environments. They recognize and plan for human factors in order to function safely and efficiently. They focus on failure, which is another way of talking about Murphy's Law, that what can go wrong will go wrong at the worst possible time. There has always been a delicate balance between production and safety. We generally refer to this as risk management. However, do the pressures to produce sometimes override considerations for safety? In an intense and prideful can-do culture such as firefighting, the influence of human factors can disrupt this balance. We need to accept this fact and incorporate this limitation into the way we do business. Ivan Popolitti is a human performance specialist with the U.S. Forest Service who has a background as a lead plane pilot with accident investigation experience. This goes back to uh, pressures of effectiveness, thoroughness, trade-off. If we look at the 10 standard firefighting orders, for example, and we look at number 10, fight fire aggressively having provided for safety first. This is a complete effectiveness, thoroughness trade-off. Because if we want to be completely effective at fighting the fire, we're going to be aggressive. But if we're going to be completely thorough, we're going to be completely safe. How can you be both completely safe and completely effective? What we're asking our people to do is use their judgment to come to some middle ground of application of this standard firefighting order to understand that or to develop a way of, of implementing this philosophy that they have to make some sort of effectiveness, thoroughness trade-off. Now our desire is that they make that trade-off on the basis of safety. The pressure to produce is felt acutely among sawyers on a crew. For a crew cutting line, the pace is set by those in front running chainsaws. Saw teams prepare helispots for crew shuttles. Sawyers drop snags prior to firefighters mopping an area up. Sawyers cut saw line before the diggers. Sawyers set the pace. Recognizing the way human factors affect them is critical to achieving the balance of production and safety. Mike Krupski is the assistant superintendent for the Sawtooth Hotshots, who has a background in smoke jumping, hotshots, and engines. As far as pressures from the overhead divisions, the management teams, they do, they do put pressures on it, they have time frames, and they have a plan that will work if things are completed within us in certain time parameters. So we do what we can to, to manage and, and complete it, but realistically, you know, there's, we can only go as fast as we can go. And we're the ones that are getting, that are out there on the ground and we're seeing the actual workload. It's still, the, you know, the safety of the guys. That's what overrides everything else. There's only so much that you can do. And if there's, if, if we're not able to complete it in that time frame, then um, we can either make the adjustments internally to, to get more production. Uh, and if, that, if that's not working out, then, it's, then you just need more resources to, to be able to complete it. Andrew Addy is a senior firefighter with the Sawtooth Hotshots who has a background in engines and hotshots. Absolutely, there are external pressures, you know, when it comes to the dig essentially being in what we call the saw's kitchen. Um, it's kind of that friendly competition that, you know, the two different, I guess, organizations, you know, give to one another. The, the dig likes to compete and, you know, be right on the saws, and the saws like to try and pull away from the dig. So, you know, it's just a matter of maintaining the, you know, safety versus the production. And, but there is a, a good friendly competition that definitely drives one another for, uh, you know, to make good headway. Godot Apuzo is an equipment specialist with the Missoula Technology and Development Center who has a background in smoke jumping, hot shots, timber inventory, and is a C certifier for chainsaws and cross-cut saws. I think there's high expectation to get a lot of production done, and sometimes we tend to take shortcuts or just kind of power through it. And that'll get you so far, and we see tired and fatigued as being number one things that are you know, causing people to have these chap strikes. If those chaps weren't there, 
guarantee there would have been a, a hospital visit. The recognition of deteriorating mental and physical ability is built into our system in the form of work rest ratios and 14 day assignments. And the idea is we reach the end of the day or assignment before we become unsafe to ourselves or others. Not everyone is the same though, and not all days or assignments are the same. A short review of some common human factors will be helpful to illustrate how they might look. So let's just take everyday work. What is everyday work for a firefighter? Well, we work in an environment that is far beyond what any Olympic athlete works in. I mean, much longer duration, 14 to 16 hour days, in some of the most arduous conditions known to mankind, in smoke, in dirt, in heat, and we work continuously. Poor air quality, high density altitudes, operational considerations that are far beyond that of, of any other athlete that you could possibly imagine. So the expectations that are placed on firefighters are extreme. Distractions are a human factor that will degrade decision-making ability and upset the flow of information necessary to maintain the fine balance between safety and production. Fatigue is most likely the greatest contributor to poor decision-making ability, and it can be difficult to recognize in yourself but there are signs that will tell you that fatigue is affecting your decision-making ability. When we're managing fatigue, um, number one, we look at physical ability, so that's in selection of who the Sawyers are. Number two is, is uh, an empowerment of the people, and we're observing them, and we're trying to, to see signs, but there's something that the individual has to swallow their pride, I guess, and at some point recognize that they're they're tired and they need a, a break. And so we try to definitely emphasize that in our training and just how we do things daily that they, that it's, that they can do that, they can make that call. Your attitude can have a big effect on your safety. Have you ever said to yourself, ah, it's just mop up, or I've done this a hundred times already. That is the voice of complacency who sits on your shoulder and tells you these things and he hopes you'll be listening and buy it. Another attitude type is doing something really hard, possibly outside of your skill level, to draw attention to yourself and gain some glory. This is Macho talking to you, who is a close relative of stupid, and they are often confused as they are very much alike. Again, don't buy what they're selling. External and internal pressures to accomplish a task are another human factor that will always be with us. It's how we deal with them that allows us to maintain that fine balance between safety and productivity. Safety can be the result of proactive action to preserve options and keep at the fat end of the options wedge. It can also be a complete absence of accidents. It can be successfully checking off all our go boxes on our go, no-go checklist. Safety can certainly be all of these things and the necessary thought process that needs to happen to address these items is a large part of keeping ourselves safe. Measuring production is the easier of the two sides to measure. Traditionally, we can use chains per hour, bucket drops, loads of retardant delivered, sling loads delivered, or chains of line secured to measure how much production has occurred. The catch is, was it done safely? Speed itself can be an element of safety. Sawyers are taught that the less time you spend under the tree, the safer you are, which is about minimizing time exposed to risk. The Marines started a saying about speed, which has been adopted by many other organizations. We have another saying too, I think, given the people the the ability to try to calm them down and take some of the factors out of the, the loud chainsaw and stuff like that would say slow is smooth and smooth is fast. So you try to make people smooth and then if they're smooth then it's, then it's more efficient.
High production is an element of initial attack to control the fire before it spreads and necessitates bringing in more resources and exposing them to risk. On large fires, pushing hard to punch in a line is a way to keep our options open, knowing that unforeseen events are likely to occur. Balancing trade-offs between safety and production requires a high degree of analytical thought. This gets complicated by the presence of human factors that work against this thought process by degrading it. Analytical thought is carried out in the forebrain, while the midbrain is responsible for flight or flight responses. Under high stress, the midbrain takes control and your analytical abilities roll back to that of a caveman. Human factors push you closer into the midbrain. After an accident, when people ask the question, what could they have been thinking? It is possible that under stress, the caveman made an appearance courtesy of the midbrain. What can we do to overcome the effects human factors have on us? You can begin by identifying some personal trigger points that say, I'm not performing safely and need to take a break or hand off the saw. How fast was the saw running when you hit your chaps to get a, a relationship to the chain speed? The saw is designed to run at full throttle. Why are you cutting your chaps at half throttle? That's implying that you're not cutting. You're doing something else. What are you doing? And they're saying, well, I was walking and the chain was still spinning or I was tired and fatigued or a mixture of all three. And I, you know, I, I was tired, I rested the saw on my leg and it got my chaps. Here are a few ideas that can be implemented to deal with human factors at the crew level. We try and foster kind of that open, honest type environment to where, you know, they, they can come to us that they're tired or um, they're having some issues. Early in the season, trying to build up the mutual respect and listen to them, the trust, and I think with that, that fosters the relationship that they're able to recognize that and stop and put the saw down if they need to, if they're getting too fatigued. That's kind of where our, our roving squad leader comes into play. He's kind of there to provide those updates, um, you know, keep the, the Sawyers in, informed on any type of, of change in weather, any updates that come over the radio, you know, a point of contact that that we can make with the Sawyers and then that way they're still maintaining the overall big picture of you know what the fire's doing, what the weather's doing, um, extended forecasts, those kind of things. However you put together your plan, make sure you share it with others on your crew to ensure that when you are affected by human factors others will recognize it for what it is and take action to help. In closing, we'll hear a few words from Douglas Dent about safety. It's absolutely imperative that you remember that you have the option to back off at all times. And remember that you always have that option. Always remember that your most important job is to make it home every night safely.